The following contains spoilers, so proceed with caution. Talk a little bit about the good, the bad, and the ugly of this movie. What we liked, what we didn't like, and what we hated, if there's anything that we hated at all in it. For me, I will say uh, there are two... From, there were two moments that, two things in this movie that I I wish that, that didn't quite work for me. One was in that awesome car, Bam, the Batmobile chase, which I thought was a phenomenal chase with the penguin, just awesome, so much fun. The coincidence of the truck kind of lowering as a ramp for the Batmobile to <laughs> to jump off of, I was like, ah, you could have like maybe yeah. made it like already down and had him drive towards it a little bit. I was like, that's a little bit coincidental, but whatever. Because if that's not down, he can't get the penguin, and then the whole movie is different. And the other thing, too, is uh, I kind of wish we got one more scene with Alfred at the end. Just, like, one little, like, acknowledgement that, hey, he's he's not dead. He's I mean, he's not, because obviously he's not. But, you know, just a little bit of – just one little moment of him and Alfred at the end of the movie, uh, I kind of would have appreciated. But those are the only two negatives that I really took away from this. My absolute favorite – my favorite villain is the penguin. And – Colin Farrell was in it way more than I thought he was going to be. And when he was in it, he was phenomenal. We all thought he looked like Richard Kind when we first saw the makeup. But watching <laughs> the movie, he was he was Robert De Niro. He was like a Dude, fat Robert De Niro. And he he was he was funny. He had his limp. He the the thing is with that character though was the makeup and Colin Farrell combined are what really made that character. Because when he's angry, you're like, oh, he's angry. But then when he's kind of like dumbfounded and shocked when he's being interrogated by by Batman and Gordon, he's like his facial expressions are just like amazing. And that's 90 percent makeup. Right. Like Colin Farrell's doing the puppeteering face. He's basically a puppet. And his face, I'm like, that is so, like his face was just so perfect. His expressions were amazing. I, I just I thought that was phenomenal. I also thought Catwoman was probably one of our best Catwomans. Not that we've had that many, really. But I mean, we have, I guess. But she was phenomenal. And uh, Commissioner Gordon was a standout for me in this movie. Like he was toe to toe with the Batman. He worked with the Batman. He was the Robin to to Batman. He worked with him. He did a lot with him. Uh, so those for me, those are my standout. There's a lot more good I could say, but I'm gonna let uh, Rob take it from here. Uh, yeah, there was uh, definitely a lot of good. I, I concurred with you about the uh, Alfred thing. I felt like it needed an extra scene in there. And who knows, maybe that's going to be a deleted scene at some point. Maybe they, they cut it for time or something like that. But, uh, you know, uh, that, that was one added point that I think could have done a little bit better. And also, like, even though, like, I'm looking at the movie and I see hard, like, difficulty cutting stuff, it did feel like it was a little bit too long. Like it was like five or 10 minutes too long, but at the same time, I don't know what you would have cut right now, right now off the top of my head. But like, yeah, it just felt like it dragged just a little bit, just a hair a little bit at the end towards the end. Um, but uh, yeah, like that, that, that's what it, I mean, you touched off as a negative, but as a gigantic plus for like huge positive for me is the introduction of the Batmobile in general in this movie. Like I oh, no, watched that was this, phenomenal. I, I watched this in an IMAX screen and I just when that engine revs, like you know, I know this is like a muscle car and stuff like that. And physically the tumbler and Aflax Batmobile are physically much big, bigger vehicles. But this this Batmobile sounded way bigger than all those ones. It was a horror character and the way that score played it all up like I was just like geez this this batmobile is relentless it's like literally if you're driving behind him and batman is chasing you i'm i, I might pull over just be like <laughs> take, me in, take me in batman <laughs> i don't want you to follow me anymore because uh, i think i just went out of all orifices i it's all gone everything in my body body is gone because i just heard you rev up your edge of mind <laughs> i'm done and it, I, I, got, I just I love that time design for it no, I know I you didn't like that it's specific not, moment. It's not the scene. It was just the one the ramp moment. just felt like I was like, I'm like, ah, oh. like it was just everything yep. is so like grounded. And then the ramp is just like, ah, oh, here you go. Click. You know, that was it's like if that's your biggest problem with a movie in three hours. <laughs> anyway, go on. Rob. <laughs> yeah, no. And, and and it was like that was a huge highlight for me. And, you know, even though I understand, like, you know, in, exactly why it was used. I mean, um, the, the the Batman squirrel outfit was a little <laughs> A little odd, like I, 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 I don't, I don't know how much I love that, but that's again little tiny nitpicking stuff. That's like you know, not, that did not really affect my enjoyment of the movie all that much at all. 
that's funny. The squirrel suit had me smiling at, like from ear to ear because I was like, because it's so practical. And I'm like, I love those suits. I'm like, yes, he's doing it. Batman should do that. That's how I felt. But to each other, Scotty. That was the superhero landing that I laughed at. Yeah. The- <laughs> <laughs> he nails, nails his head off the bridge. Yeah. Jesus. It's so good. So good. Scotty, what's your good, bad, and the ugly? Um. Okay. So it's really hard to summarize, like, my highlights of the movie but for me like if the riddler is a sign of any future villains that we're about to get including the mob guys i think um we're in for some treats as far as the way they're building these characters uh bruce wayne's intelligence and the way that he has the contacts and then is studying the tape every night writing in that journal or i don't even think it's a journal i think that is literally like step-by-step memories of the entire night and that the guy is taking notes of situations, combat situations, et cetera, et cetera. So when people are talking about his combat prowess, I think he's really paying attention to every single thing that's happening around him. And he's a lot smarter than we know. Uh, The father's cufflinks thing was really cool. The, the fact that Alfred was being a dad, even though this kid didn't want him to be dad, he knew that this kid needed him to be there for him. And uh, this is going to be nuclear, man, because I am one of the biggest Joker fans that I know. <laughs> but the laugh and the lip makeup and not seeing it fully in the light, dude, like, I don't know. I'm not sold on the dude. The voice, I'm not sold on it. I need more. I need a little bit more. Um, but other than that, like that is my nitpickiest thing I could say, just because I am a super hyper fan of the Joker. But if it really is going to be him, I don't know how I feel about it. <laughs> That's it. How about you, man? Well, I think I think the thing with the Joker is they they didn't want to. I think the problem was they didn't want to commit to it. Andrew, how are you? Yeah. How about you for the good, the bad, and the ugly? For good, bad, and the ugly. Oh boy, let's see. Uh, yeah, the Batmobile definitely. Like, I'm so happy the Batmobile looks like a car again, um, and not just like a car, but kind of like the '60s car, <gasps> right? Um, very nice to see that. Uh, I one of the biggest standouts for me was the score. In my eyes, Michael Giacchino, or rather, in my ears, Michael Giacchino can do no wrong whatsoever. And this is just another example of how much not wrong he is constantly able to do. Uh, This is my favorite score of any Batman film by a wide margin. Uh, It's just, the the themes are all beautiful. They're so catchy. Catwoman's theme is like the best piece of music, the best piece of original movie music I have heard since the Avengers theme 10 years ago. Putting that on the table right now. Catwoman's theme, give me all the themes. Um, I see you're getting your own show. Or movie. Oh yeah, yeah. she's yeah, so good. Uh, especially if that means we get to see Bloodhaven. Yeah, yeah rock on. <laughs> um, so that yeah, the score for me was a big one. Riddler for me obviously is is part of the good. He is everything I wanted him to be, and so much more, so much scarier. Um, if I have any gripes, I think there's two things that stand out to me, and it's funny because one of them isn't even my gripe. It's just I can see it now, and you guys will all sort of see where I'm coming from here because of the age we live in, the age where people seem to, especially online, seem to have no suspension of disbelief anymore. Like it's just gone. I guarantee you within the next few months, everybody is going to be nitpicking on the fact of how did Batman survive that explosion in the church? He was standing right in front of the guy. Like that is going to come up constantly. Um, And I feel like, it, I, I'm not bothered by it, but at the same time, I understand, like, it could have been a very easy fix. Like, Reeves could have just been like, Robert, just go like this with your cape. Anything. You know, just any little thing. I, to thought, I thought he got his gauntlets up. I thought he was literally like this with his gauntlets. Okay, if he did, I great. Thought, I, thought, I, I, thought, yeah. I didn't quite catch it. Maybe maybe I was just blinking. I don't know. But uh, I I just feel like there's going to be a lot of people who are like, this movie's stupid. That couldn't really happen. Uh, but for me, the my gripe is... I wish they had gone further with Thomas Wayne as an asshole instead of backpedaling Uh, the whole, like Alfred having this big moment where he's like, no, your dad was a good man. Um, 
I just, I don't think we live in the day and age anymore where we can defend the actions of billionaires. Just, we can't, we can't. Um, and the fact that, you know, he did this thing and he's like, yeah, put, take care of this reporter. He's snooping around. I don't want him to uncover what I'm doing. Uh, I wanted them to go further with that. I wanted them to do what the Joker movie did with Thomas Wayne, but make it even more important and heartbreaking because now we're seeing this person through his son's eyes. And I didn't like that Alfred just kind of came there and was like, no, trust me, he's a, he's a good guy at the end of the day. Uh, because it, it kind of diminishes everything Riddler's doing and it diminishes the lesson that Batman needs to learn. Uh, so I wish they'd gone further with that instead of backpedaling with it. That's all. I didn't, I didn't mind that because the way that reminded me of, and I thought they did it better in this one was the last Jedi with Luke and Kylo and you got, and, and, and how they, there was, you don't know what the truth is. Is it this or is it that? And the only one that knew it in this one was Falconian. And he goes, bye-bye. He's the only one that actually knows because Alfred doesn't really know. So Alfred is just telling Bruce what he believes because he believes Thomas Wayne is a good man. Maybe he's not. Maybe what Falcone said was actually the truth, but we don't know. So I, I actually, uh, I know what you're saying. I just kind of disagree because I think that kind of played out because you don't really know where they're at on it, right? Mm-hmm. It's it, They're kind of here or there. And and uh, I think, he, I mean, he's still, regardless of anything, he might have been a good man, but he went down some dark roads, Rob. Well, yeah, and it's like we still got potentially two more movies, so there might be more of an onion to peel back about, about the Waynes in general. So, you know, they, we we cannot be done about him finding more stuff up about uh, his mother and father, and you know, things that he might have to fix up. And like, you know, if you're talking, we're talking about one more part about the Waynes and 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 Bruce specifically about you know, like how you know they never showed it, and thank God they never showed the Waynes getting killed. But it's just like you you know what effect it had on Bruce just by watching him as Bruce just of seeing how fractured how broken this this person is right like this thing happened to him as a kid and it's affected him his entire life and it's just like um he doesn't know he doesn't know how to be a person right he delves he pushes himself into this batman role and it's like that's the thing where it's like you know people might have problems with the ending and stuff like that but i think that's beautiful that goes full circle to bruce wayne and what he has to learn and be by the end of the movie and um i just think like that through line about the bruce wayne character in this is just so powerful and they did it without without showing those pearls uh hitting the (laughs) hitting the uh ground so that's that's what i think which is so masterful of uh Matt Reeves. Yeah, and you're right. There's so many layers left to peel back, Rob, that like now more than ever, I'm like, these sequels better have uh, touch on some Court of Owls stuff and some Hush stuff Mm -hmm. because that's where you can really get into the Waynes even more. Even Martha Wayne, I feel like there was something to her story that we don't know yet. Uh, Thomas is trying to protect her. She's possibly going crazy. I'm like, tell me more about Martha. Um, So yeah, I want to keep peeling that onion back. Well, Matt Reeves just came out and said the next H- another HBO show is the Arkham show. They're going to do an Arkham Asylum show, and that could really dive into Martha Arkham. I have Martha Arkham, Martha Wayne could definitely do it. Why did you say that name? <laughs> we'll never know. But this movie for me was more, way more positives than negatives. I think the one negative that a lot of people are going to take into, we're going to talk about this on an email question later, though, is the runtime. A lot of people are going to have trouble with the runtime. My only suggestion for that is you know how long it is going into it, the end. Like, just live with it, because that's what it is. Like, we've all sat through long movies before. You all saw Titanic and King Kong and Lord of the Rings 1, 2, and 3. And there's been long movies, there's been longer movies, and there will be shorter movies. And just you don't be surprised when it ends and it's three hours and 20 minutes, 30 minutes at later. And you're like, oh, that was long. No kidding. Like, come on. We all know. Or sorry, Mr. Rez is going to correct me. It's two hours and 56 minutes is the actual runtime. 